Today is a beautiful day to be doing some lost foam casting. And it's even a better day because they all came out perfect. Unlike last time I tried to do this, every single one froze. That means the metal was not able to make it around the bone and the metal hardened up and didn't finish filling out the pattern. If you would like to see that video, I will leave a link to that video in the description below. It was a complete fail. If you're new to my channel, I do lost foam casting very often. It's actually pretty simple. And using a CNC to cut out your patterns makes it even more simple. So let me show you the process and what I do next. Because the last time I tried to do this, it failed, I only put the feeder on one side. This time I'm using two feeders. I use the fast grab tacky glue for all of my gluing on this foam. It works very well. Now I'm going to be attaching the top feeder to attach to both of the other feeders. That will allow the aluminum to flow into both sides of the dog bone. After 24 hours and the glue has hardened up, I then apply a watered out mix of sheetrock drywall mud to the pattern. Now in this clip, the drywall mud is a little bit too runny. I actually added more drywall mud to the water after this clip because this was just too thin. You don't want it this thin, but you still want it kind of thin. And this is what they all look like after 24 hours of drying. And now we are going to walk these patterns out to the garage on this beautiful day to start lost foam casting. And before I start packing these in sand, I'm actually gonna light the furnace because that'll give me plenty of time to do that while the aluminum is melting. And I think it goes without saying, I'm going to be melting down the failed dog bones to make these new dog bones. So with lost foam casting, you don't use ordinary foundry sand. You're just using regular play sand that you can find at your local hardware store. But the only difference is this sand has been completely dried out. You don't want to use the sand as soon as you buy it from the store because most of the time it's wet. This sand has to be completely dry with no moisture. And you can see how simple the lost foam casting method really is. You just put the foam patterns in the sand and then fill the container with more sand all the way to the top. Once you reach the top, make sure you brush away any of the sand on top of and around those foam sprues because we don't want any sand to cover up the foam. Then we're going to be placing a can with a hole cut out of the bottom right over top of that foam and then we're gonna completely fill around those cans with more sand to lock them into place. In case you're wondering why I place those on top, I always like to warm them up before putting them into a hot crucible. wondering why am I not using both of my burners on this furnace? Well, that's because they're not really necessary. I can melt down the aluminum using just one. And I wasn't really in a hurry. So if you're in a hurry, maybe open up both burners and it will melt it faster.
This metal is at 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The last time I tried to do this, I only had it up to about 1700, which is another reason why I think it failed. So I have a little bit of aluminum left over, so I'm just going to pour the remainder into a small graphite ingot mold. So I still have a little bit of molten metal inside this crucible, but this dross that's in here is stopping it from flowing out. So I'm just going to try to remove some of the dross using a spoon from the crucible to try to pour out the rest of aluminum. It's been about 15 minutes now and it's now time to pull out the dog bones from the sand to see how they came out. These ones had a little bit less time to cool, so let's dip them into some water to see if we can get some sizzle. Not really. Today we had a wonderful day of lost foam casting aluminum and they all came out. Now it's a day later and I'm going to cut off these dog bones from the sprue using a simple hacksaw and start cleaning them up for you guys so you can see how they look. I'm super happy that these came out the way they did. It's unfortunate that I had to do this multiple times, but that's what metal casting's all about. You always get fails, and you most of the time get wins, but you have to prepare yourself for the fails. I do hope you guys like this video, so please give it a thumbs up.